I think a great place to start is to show you how I go about tying the perfect solid PVA bag presentation. I think it's one area where some anglers can struggle, but by using all the right components, it really can be very simple. First of all, let's have a look at the rig I use for my solid PVA bag fishing. You see we have here a fairly heavy three ounce inline lead. And it's important to use an inline over other lead setups. Uh, the inline, it's much more compact and fits inside a bag much more, much more easy than a, say a, a lead clip setup would or a running rig. It's a lot more compact. Coming down from that, we have a short three and a half inch braided hook link. And again, it's important to use a supple material rather than say a, a mono or a coated braid as it just allows the, the hook link to be sort of folded inside the, the confines of a bag, whereas a stiff material wouldn't really do that. And also a stiffer material would uh, have a tendency of pushing away the, the hook bait from the, from the patch of feed. Coming down there, we have a size four SSBP armor point hook and that just critically balances these two grains of artificial corn. And the reason I like it to be critically balanced is when the, the PVA is dissolved and you've got that patch of feed there, you just end up with like a, a yellow sight bob just poking up through the, the patch of feed that the carp can sort of home in on. So that's the rig. Let's uh, put it inside one of our solid PVA bags. I'm gonna be using the smaller size Rapid PVA bags. For those of you that haven't used the Rapid system, it really does speed up the whole PVA bag tying process. First thing we do, it comes with a loading tool and a, a locking collar. Simply squeeze the loading tool together, slide on the locking collar, and we then put the bottom of the, the tool inside the top of the PVA bag. And then remove the collar. What happens then, obviously the, the collar expands and it secures the PVA bag in place. We then just scoop a small amount of a ground bait into the bag and make sure it goes into all the corners and we can then lower the rig into the bag. What I do, I use the lead to sort of tap down the, the hook and the hook bait into that, that layer of ground bait and we can then fill up the, the bag with the rest of the, the pellets. And what I'm using here is a, it's a mixture of fine pellets and ground bait. And it's important to use a, a very, very small pellet. See some people trying to do it with sort of six, eight mil pellets. And what that does, it, it means there's a lot of uh, uh, sort of spaces in between the pellets for the, for the air to get trapped in. As by using this fine mix, it basically fills in all the spaces, there's no air inside the bag and the end result is a very, very tight, compact PVA bag. I've filled up that up, sort of just over halfway. And what I do now is I just pull the line, so the insert of the lead is just poking through the top of the mix. What we do now is just twist the loader and the bag few turns round and then lick the bag where it's on the loader and slide it down and squeeze the loading tool tight and there's nearly a finished bag there. But what I like to do now to make it much more streamlined is just push in the, the corners of the bag these little tags, just lick them and fold them and stick them down. And there you go. And that is 
almost as aerodynamic as a lead and it feels it feels like a lead as well it's very very tightly packed and that will cast a long long way but I haven't finished quite yet see some people I like to inject flavors and inject oils in the bag to sort of boost the attraction but what I do I have a pot here of hemp oil all I do is you give the bag a bit of a a bit of a dunk because the lead insert is poking through the top of the PVA the oil does find its way inside the PVA bag and obviously it's all coat in the outside of the bag anyway so it really is a, a bag that's packed full of attraction so there you have it really that is my perfect PVA bag presentation why not give it a go Here's a little trick I like to use on waters with light weed where perhaps chods have been done to death. And it's a little setup I like to call the parachute rig. I have a simple pop-up rig here. And I know in a lot of instances people like to use PVA foam, but instead what I have is a small PVA stick of dry ground bait, not dampened at all, straight from the bag. And I make the little stick with a, a tag of about an inch and a bit long. Just simply nick the hook onto the tag end. I know some people like to thread the entire hook link through the bag, but in this instance there really is no need. Now when you cast this out, because the ground weight is dry, it's very, very, very buoyant. So after you cast it out, the hook link will be sat like that. And as the PVA starts to dissolve, it'll release the the content of the stick around the hook bait and the hook bait will also come to rest very very slowly on the late bed over any light debris. So there you are, it's a nice little option instead of using PVA foam, a one that provides a great deal more attraction. Today's tip is something I wouldn't have even considered to be a tip five or six years ago and that's the use of the stringer. Um, in recent years, anglers have favoured PVA bags and PVA sticks and, and the string has been very much neglected and consequently it's a, it's a presentation that the carp now don't encounter on a regular basis, which as far as I'm concerned makes it a bit of an edge. There's two main ways of tying up the stringers and that's with the use of either PVA tape or the narrow PVA mesh. In the case of the PVA tape, just a case of spacing them out on the PVA it is important to leave the spaces by the way if you have them bunched up together like that then they aren't going to dissolve the water can't get to the PVA so they won't it won't dissolve so space them out and it's just a case of laying the the tape just above I've got the, the silicon here and just wrapping it round I've got a four bait stringer here the amount of baits you use depends kind of on the, the distance you're fishing. The more baits you put on, the greater the uh, distance is going to be affected. So if you're only casting sort of 40, 50 yards, you could get away with four bait stringers. If you need to go farther, cut it down to just a two bait stringer. So that's how it would be with the, with the tape. Or in the case of the mesh, it's just simply a case of putting a few baits in the plunger, leaving a bit of a tag end on the PVA. And again, nick it on, folding it over, and there you go. And with this presentation, I do like to use matching hook bait to the freebies. I think the fish come along, they see a little clump of bait there. I think they just kind of engulf the lot in, in one go. And it's a great presentation on, on boily, hungry waters, especially big fish waters where they, they love a boily. This would kind of now be one of my, uh, my go-to approaches. I think it's fair to say that most anglers these days tend to favour a semi-fixed lead setup and as a result the running rig has become quite neglected but in recent years it's something I've started to use more and more as it gives the carp something very different to deal with. Well here's the running lead setup I've been using to good effect in, in recent years and it's made up of the angled drop-off run rig kit. Now you might be wondering what this tip has to do with PVA, well I'll tell you. For the running rig to work most effectively, 
need to use a very heavy lead. That way, when the lead is anchored on the lake bed, it means a line can travel freely through the run ring, which improves bite indication. But the problem you got there then, is when you're playing fish on a heavy lead and it's bouncing around, it can result in hook pulls. Now, with these drop-off run rig kits, it allows the lead, as the name suggests, to drop off. Now what we've got here, we've got the swivel of the lead held in place, in this instance, by one of the PVA strips, which is threaded through the slot here and then trimmed off. That way, when you're playing a fish, once that lead starts bouncing around, it will be released. And it also improves the safety aspect. When you're fishing uh, in snaggy or weedy waters, once that lead becomes lodged in a bit of weed, it'll ping off very freely. Now the use of these PVA strips isn't restricted solely to the drop-off run rig kits. I also use them when I want the lead to be ejected on the drop-off helicopter rigs. Again, when you're fishing really weedy waters, you want that lead to come off, it really does improve your chances of landing any fish hooked. Here's a little trick I like to use when I want to bait up accurately around my hook bait without bringing the marker rod and spod rod out to play. Here I've got two PVA foam nuggets, which I'm gonna push down one of the narrow mesh systems. Push them down with the plunger. Like so. And just tie them off as you would a normal mesh. PVA bag. Leave a little tag there about an inch long before trimming it off. And then, simply a case, nicking on the little foam bag. And once you've cast that, in the position, obviously the foam will rise to the top once the PVA is dissolved and it'll give you a brilliant marker which to bait up accurately with a catapult. If you'd like to watch more videos from Fox Fishing TV then click the link here or if you'd like to subscribe to the channel then click the link here.